Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Laskowitz, and today I'm going to show you how you can use the advanced options of approvals in Power Automate. A lot of people have been using the Power Automate approvals, but a lot of them don't know about the advanced options that are in there. So I thought, let's make a video about that. So without further ado, let's switch to my desktop and show you what goodies you can find in the advanced options within the approvals. So let's go. Okay, so here we are on my desktop and I already have the Power Automate website open in my flows and then I have the approval advanced options flow open here. I have a trigger called manually trigger a flow. And if you know me, you know that I really like this action because it's really fast. It helps me a lot to start working on my flows in here. Uh, of course, in a different scenario or in this scenario in production, I'm gonna use different triggers because usually I won't trigger uh, approval, for instance, with uh, manually trigger a flow action, but I would use something else there. For instance, a new file in SharePoint or maybe a new SharePoint list item or maybe a new CDS record or something like that. So this is just for demo demonstration purposes. So let's leave it with that. I have a compose action here and that's to make sure that I can grab the file name as well because that's not uh, a standard uh, output of the input here. Um, so to when you add this as an uh, expression, you will get this block in here and that will give you the file name from the file that you would upload in the manually trigger flow trigger. And then this is the action where it's all about. So start and wait for an approval in this case. You also have start an approval and wait for an approval. Um, but those, uh, or create an approval it is, and uh, wait for an approval. Uh, those two are different because start and wait for an approval actually sends out the approval immediately. And if you create an approval, you can also create your own approval card or maybe your own, um, your own kind of thing for uh, approvals. And in this case, you're just using the standard stuff in here. So in this case, um, we're using the approval type approve, reject, first to respond, but you can use also the other three that are available here. In this case, we're just gonna use this one, but the actions that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later or the options we're gonna use, uh, they are available for all the different approval types. In here, you can see a couple of, a couple of options already in the standard options that are available. Uh, the title, of course, that's the title of the approval assigned to, that's the person who has to respond to the approval. We have the details in here where you can put some extra details. For instance, when you're talking about a CDS record, you want to include maybe some metadata that you have in that CDS record. Um, and item link and item link description are also really important if you're, for instance, working with files that you don't want to send as an attachment which we're gonna talk about a little bit later, but item link can be uh, a direct link to the file. So if you want to uh, create an approval on a file and you forgot to edit something or to change something in your file um, and the person hasn't responded yet to the approval, you can still change them around and then uh, wait for the approval to happen. And they always will work with the latest version, of course. Uh, but in some cases, that's not something you want, but uh, those options are in here as well. When you select the show advanced options option here, you see a lot more uh, fields in here. The first one is requester and requester is something you can use to change the, um, the, the naming of the person because normally when I would create this uh, approval and we can show that in a little bit, uh, you would always see my name. So when I, for instance, would create this approval flow on every created file in a SharePoint library, uh, this would always run under my credentials. So it would always show my name and sometimes it's somebody else who creates that file in the 
uh, in the file library in SharePoint. So that's something that you can use to change uh, the, uh, the naming a little bit. But let's just start with uh, testing this flow and show you how it looks when I don't fill in any advanced options. So let's select test, continue, and then I have file and email in here. I'm not gonna use those in this case. So let's select run flow. And then we will switch to the action items approvals view, refresh this and see if we already, yes, we already have an approval in there. So here you can see that the approval is approval advanced options. That's the title. The requester is Daniel Laskwitz. I haven't filled that in, but that's because uh, the connector is under my name now because I created the flow. And of course there's some date in here. I can response, uh, fill in a response, for instance, approve right now, and I can select confirm. And then I responded to the approval and the approval is done now. When I, oh, I already deleted, <laughs> I already uh, responded to this. So let's try this again, because I also want to show you the outlook, look and feel, of course. So here we go. We probably have to wait a couple of seconds and there it is. So here you can see the Outlook email, how it looks in Exchange Online. Here you have an email, of course, with uh, pending approval in there, requested by, there's a name and an email address here. There's a date created and there's details and I didn't fill in any details. So it's blank here. Um, the other thing that you also see here is the subject is the approval title. So that's where the title is going to be. I'm going to click approve and submit to make sure that I responded to that approval. Let's go back to the flow. And now let's change it a little bit around because I want to fill in the requester. And in this case, I'm going to select it here. Um, this is a little bit typical field because I can fill in manager, for instance, and then I can select it, but I can also change it around. And there are those uh, arrows for, and when I do that, I can add dynamic content in this field as well. So I want to select the email input from my manually trigger a flow trigger. And when I select that one, when I will fill in an email in the, uh, in the flow, when I'm triggering the flow, it will use that email in there. So let's do that and save and test. Now I can enter a file, but we haven't done that yet. I can also enter an email. And in this case, I'm gonna fill in manager and I'm gonna select run flow and when I do that, it starts the approval already. We can go to the approvals here and refresh. Then you can see how it looks here. And here it will see some changes. You can see the requester and the name here is manager instead of Daria Laskowitz, what it was before. And if you go to the email that's in here, you can see it's also a little bit, little bit different um, because it changed um, the requested for and there was a manager field. And below that, you can see that it still shows my name because I created it because um, we don't want to have impersonation that, for instance, I can create all kinds of um, approval requests uh, for a certain manager without uh, that person knowing. So that's something that uh, they always build in and that's a security measure. So that's why that's in there. So let me approve this one and submit it to show you even more that's possible in here. So here we are, we have two approvals already. Let's edit this one and see what else we can do. Enable notifications is also one that's um, one option that you have. When I change this to no, and I will save this, I can test it again and start this 
approval again and let's run this flow and see what happens with the notifications turned off. So here we are in the approvals part. I already responded. Not on the latest one, but the one before, of course. But this is the latest one. When I select this, I can just see the same approval we just had. But if I go to email, I don't receive an email. And that's because the notifications have been turned off. So this is a way that you don't want to see an email, for instance, and you only want to see them on uh, your approval center in Power Automate, the website, or maybe on the mobile phone. So whenever you're using this really a lot and people have the Power Automate app as well, and they, for instance, also have the Outlook app, you don't want people to have multiple notifications because of that approval. So that's why you can then uh, turn off the notifications here. Let me approve this one as well. Before I do that, I want to show you that there's also the possibility to reassign here. Uh, so I can reassign and change it to somebody else. Uh, but let me approve this one and confirm. And also show you in the approval that it's possible to also turn the reassignment off. So when I save this and test it, I can fill in manager again and select run flow, done. And now I can see the approval in here. And that's the new approval I just got. And now I can respond, but I can't reassign the approval. So that's another option you have. Um, and I'm going to approve this one as well. And now we're already at the latest option or the last option we have available here in the advanced options. And that's the attachment. And in this case, I'm just going to add one attachment. But it's also possible to have multiple attachments. If you have multiple files that need to be uh, approved, for instance, uh, you can grab files from SharePoint from a folder, for instance, and get all the files that are in a certain folder and approve the, uh, put those in approval. Uh, and if you want to do that, you have to, let me show you, there's here, uh, switch to input entire array. And in that case, you need to um, add something to an array um, and you can do that for multiple files. So if you have multiple files, you want to copy this part, for instance, and put another one below that. So now we have two files, for instance, um, and we can have even more if we want to. Uh, but this is uh, something that you have to, um, to do uh, when you have multiple uh, approvals or approval items attachments in here. So let me switch back to the normal view here and I can fill in an attachment name here and that's going to be the compose output because I added the compose here and this is the trigger body and it gets the name of the file input from this action from the trigger here. And the file content is already available when you use that uh, that input uh, and I can select that here. So that's the file here. Um, but for the approval for the attachments name, you have to do a little bit more work in this case. But if you have SharePoint, for instance, and you're going to use that, it's going to be a lot easier. But for this case, um, if you use the, uh, the manually trigger flow, one, it doesn't give you the file name immediately. So you need to uh, put some expressions in here. Um, so now I added the attachment name and the attachment content in here. So let's test this one, save and test. Let's add a file here. And I can use a file that I have on my desktop right now. And I can use an email here and let's add my manager again and run this flow. And if we wait a little while, 
it will start the approval. Yes, here we are. And then we can refresh this page as well and open it up. And then we can see I have my attachments in here. I have the requester called manager in here with a photo even. And I can respond to this with approve or reject and I can't reassign those. So let's approve this and confirm. And now we have also finished this approval and that's about it for this video. So with that, I want to end this video. Uh, I hope you really like this because I think a lot of people don't know about these options. And there is a lot of um, good stuff hidden in the advanced options usually. There are tons of other actions that also have that. So make sure to select the show advanced options um, link if you add an action and you see it in there. Make sure to select that and see what's underneath that because there's tons of great options available in a lot of different actions. So I hope you like this. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe and I hope to see you at the next video. Bye bye.